Hey guys, I am so excited to do this video because for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that I only have two streams of income. You know, I do very well with my blogs, thank you Jesus. And I also have this YouTube channel that has been doing very well. I started over two years ago and now I'm earning about five to seven thousand dollars per month. Now God has really blessed me to grow on these two platforms from nothing. I started with zero subscribers. And I am totally convinced if you want something to happen, it will. It doesn't require you to have any experience because I had none. Just a will to learn and do it. But I like to stay on the cautious side of things because if something ever happened to my website, how would I make money? Or if something ever happened to YouTube, then what would I have? Nothing. You know, the chance of those things happening are very low, but it is still a chance. And I want to feel financially secure so that if one of my income streams fail, I won't skip a beat. And I want you guys to have the same thing. Now, I know real estate is something that has stood the test of time, so it only makes logical sense for this to be my next step. But for those of you who do know who I am, I do have small kids and I quit my job so I could stay home and raise them. So I'm really trying to be careful about the amount of workload that I put on myself because I'm supposed to really, I'm trying to be there for my kids and really be there. But as soon as these kids get into school, I'm going full force into real estate and I am huge on doing my research first before I put my money on anything. So I want to take you guys on the ride with me as I learn about real estate investing for beginners so I can start making money right out of the gate. So today I'm going to be talking to the GOAT, Scott Omar, who is a 25 year veteran in the real estate investing space. And Scott bought his first deal at 14 years old. I have no idea how that's possible, but we're going to find out today. He also has done over 3,000 deals and counting. And after a few market cycles, he had to adapt and learn multiple strategies when it comes to real estate investing. And he has perfected this no cash, no credit real estate transaction practice and has built an insane profitable investing model with this. So he's going to be talking to us today about multiple ways to invest in real estate for beginners and how to do it without risking any cash or your credit score. You guys ready? Let's go. Hey, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Awesome. So we're going to get right into it. And you have to tell us first, just a little bit about yourself. And also, how in the world did you buy your first property at 14? Did I have that right? You have it right. You have it right. Yes, I have. Uh, I've been doing this quite some time. And and so, uh, yeah, I bought my first house at 14. Uh, uh, I don't consider that my, my full time start into real estate, but that's where I kind of got bit by the bug. And so uh, and been doing it ever since. And, and uh, I'll kind of share, share a little of my story as we go here. But uh, so I'm 14 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm mowing lawns and making some money on the side. And uh, and I had a thought my father had, had read a book on how to buy and sell real estate. It was kind of a wholesale based book. And and so, uh, as I always tell people, I had a lot of help at 14, of course, but uh, but I was able to buy. A, a property for fifteen hundred dollars, and now this was um, thirty plus years ago. I'm dating myself, but uh, so, uh, but even at that point, fifteen hundred dollars isn't a, a real special property if you can imagine. Uh, but it was an empty house. It was actually a property that had been foreclosed uh, because the taxes weren't paid. So every property uh, in the country has real estate taxes on it that pay for things like the uh, the garbage pickup and, and other uh, kind of emergency services. And so if you don't pay those, then the city can actually foreclose and, and they will auction those properties off. So uh, it was a tax lien property and I bought it for $1,500. Uh, my dad's attorney helped me with the kind of the logistics of it. And <sighs> Uh, ultimately, um, uh, didn't really do much to it, kind of cleaned it out, did some of the landscaping, you know, mowed the grass, got it looking a little bit prettier. And, and then I ended up selling it for $3,800 and made a nice quick buck. And, and I was, I was bit by the real estate bug. And ever since then, I, I, I I've been hooked. And, and so it was, uh, it was a, a lot of fun. It was a great experience and really a great starting point for me to, to just get to taste a little bit of entrepreneurialism at a, at a young age. You can actually do that though, as a 14 year old, you can sign papers on a house. That's where the attorney came into play. So he had to actually sign for me. That's a great question. Yeah. And when you're under 18, you do have to have, have, have a, a, an adult that, that would essentially sign on your behalf uh, because at 14, you don't even have a valid identification of any sort. Right. So, yeah. So he, he, he helped with the signing and of course the, the logistics. That is amazing. Amazing. 
Okay, so can you just tell us a little bit about your background in real estate and then want to get started talking about the different ways as a beginner myself, how I can get started into real estate investing. Absolutely. So, so uh, out of uh, high school, I, w- I went to college, I, I played a little football. And as I was a, a freshman, I, I got a call from the NFL to tell me specifically that I wasn't going to be even close. Don't waste your time anymore. So <laughs> hung up the cleats after my freshman year and, and, uh, and I wanted to drop out and, and I, I'm, I'm very thankful my parents wouldn't let me. Uh, I liked making money. I knew real estate was, was my passion and, and really what I want to pursue as a career. And uh, they said, you know, you, you've got to graduate. If you take time off, you're not going to go back. And, right. and so uh, so I ended up taking uh, extra class load and ended up graduated about three and a half years and uh, just because I want to get out there and, and start making money. And so uh, so I started working for my father at that time and, and uh, we did a lot of deals. In fact, part of uh, I've, I've got about 3000 plus deals under my belt at this point. A large part is because we were doing about 150 of these every year. Uh, we would buy them. In many cases, we would pay cash. Uh, there's also several ways that you can buy them where you don't have to have cash or credit, um, which is one of the things we specialize in today, uh, but we would fix them up and then we would ultimately sell those off. And uh, kind of the focus that we've always had, Whitney, has been to, to work with people that um, can afford a mortgage, can afford a down payment, but but may not be able to walk into a bank and qualify for a traditional loan. Uh, it surprises people to this day that about 70% of our population can't uh, walk into a bank just off the street and, and ultimately qualify. There's just so many uh, uh, requirements and, and parameters that, that banks uh, ultimately um, must have in order for them to, to approve the loan. So we identified a niche that, that there was all these folks that um, uh, self-employed people had, had, had good jobs and certainly a good income, but for a lot of reasons, you know, couldn't walk into the bank. And by the way, divorce and, and you lose your job or you have a sickness or so many factors can kind of take you out of that, that, that ability to walk in and, and qualify. So uh, focused a lot on, on, on that as a specialization, but, uh, but I've been buying and selling ever since. And, and about uh, 10 years ago, uh, there's a pink wall behind me, as you can see on uh, my pink shirt here, but, but started a company called Little Pink Houses of America. And uh, our real focus is, is creating homeowners. That's our passion. And, and it's kind of what drives our, 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 our hearts behind the profit. And so we, we want to help people become homeowners. And, and so that's really a big core of our business. Now, we buy and sell, and we do it in a few different ways. And, and we do work with a lot of folks that, that are uh, really at the beginning that don't have uh, a good grasp on, on a lot of the real estate jargon and how things are done. And so we've got some very simple ways that we work with people to get them involved in real estate and, uh, and ultimately uh, uh, helping create homeowners in, in other parts of the country. But, uh, but that's a little bit about where we are today. And, and, um, and uh, again, kind of what our, our focus is when it comes to uh, the purpose of what we do. We always believe that having a purpose behind profit is, is essential for the long run. Making money is great. And, and we like like making money. That's not, not a bad word around here. Um, but I, I've learned that over time that if you don't have a purpose, it, it, it may not be as meaningful. And I, I've always felt that was really important. No, that is so true. So true. And um, I even know for myself, I'm self-employed and we recently moved into our house and we had some issues trying to get a loan from the bank because, you know, you have to be employed for a certain amount of years or self-employed. And they want to see like a good track record and you can't have a down year because if you do, that's something that they don't want to take a risk at. So I definitely understand banks not um, or self or I should say entrepreneurs having the difficulty of trying to get a, a loan because of just the state of people not you know trusting them to sure. be able to actually pay to pay it back. Well, and then the, the two, what are the, the two, two biggest uh, objectives as a, as a self-employed business owner is a make as much money as you can and, and B pay as little taxes as you can. Right. And, and there's ways as entrepreneurs and uh, that you can do that, but uh, ultimately banks look at, at the bottom line, the net net number on your tax returns. And so it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know, when you take advantage of the write-offs that are, are perfectly uh, at your disposal and perfectly legal um, it takes the, your net income down. And, and that's one of the things we've learned about self-employed is they many have access to a lot of money. Uh, they generate a lot of money in their business, but they write so many things off and, and so they can't qualify. And, and so that's, that's really, really the biggest demographic of people we sell to our, our self-employed business owners for just that reason. But even good credit and, and making a lot of money, you still have to jump through a lot of hoops uh, right. um, just to get the bank loan. Yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> okay. So as someone like me, just trying to get in the real estate game. And so what are my options? I just want to know what my options are. And I guess we can start from there. 
Sure, sure. Well, first of all, let me just say that 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 there are a few industries that you can generate as as much money uh, as quickly as you can in real estate, and I think that's part of the appeal. Um, uh, in fact, uh, we we talk about this often around here. Um, we have a very simple minimum benchmark that we'd like to generate on every deal. We'd like to make at least $10,000 on every deal and uh, love to make a lot more than that, but that's really the minimum we have. And in many cases, in fact, I'd say in most cases, we're not using any money and, and nor are we having to sign for any sort of personal credit. And so there's certain ways to do that, but, um, but we talk about it, you know, how many people in their life have a $10,000 check in their hand, right? Most work and their jobs and they have their checks and but but getting chunk money like that is is, is not something that happens in every industry and and certainly in every corner it's uh, kind of unique to real estate so so part of why we love it so much is because uh, you can make make some good chunk money so as far as entry level or starting points um, one of the most common Whitney uh, is is what's called wholesaling and it's where you are uh, essentially finding a, a, a motivated seller uh, typically the property that you're looking at uh, does have some things that would be distressed, whether it's in condition, uh, need some work physically, whether the, um, the finances of the property, if it's behind on taxes, if it's behind on mortgage payments, usually there's some uh, part of the recipe that would cause it to be distressed. And um, you find those and there's certain ways that we have that we can find those. And, um, and in wholesaling, you basically come to an agreement with the seller and, uh, and then you will really basically assign that agreement you have with the seller to another investor who wants to actually buy it and, and fix it up and kind of what we say, take it for the long dollar. So you're, you're taking a short dollar as the, the, the middle person, if you will, and you're assigning that to an investor for the long dollar. And so wholesaling is, is something that we don't really preach a lot around here um, for a few reasons, by the way, and, and I'm going to tie this down, but, but uh, when you're dealing with wholesaling uh, in, in, I guess, traditionally you're dealing sometimes lower price point homes. Uh, there are times where maybe some of the, the areas you deal with may not be as, as um, comfortable as you'd like. We've had some of our, our folks that we work with that have come from wholesaling say, you know, I didn't always feel safe and I, I didn't necessarily like the, the properties. They were dirty and, you know, had some things and that, that, and that's part, part of the business. So, <clears throat> but what we've done is, is we've learned that you can kind of do the same type of wholesaling approach, but you can do it on nicer homes or what we call pretty homes. And so I have an example Example, what we'll do at some point here, maybe in, in a subsequent video, but it was a, originally a $500,000 home. It was a, was actually a 20 acre piece of property and, and people sometimes, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money in a 20 acre. Uh, and they actually had horses there. So we kind of call it a horse farm. But what I learned a long time ago is actually easier doing uh, deals when you're, you're dealing with prices that maybe between two and 500,000, sometimes even a little more, you deal with, with sellers that really understand. Um, we're not sell sales. I mean, we're in sales, but we're not salesy. We have very soft approaches. Uh, what we say to people, here's kind of who we are, what we do. And if it's the right fit, great. If not, you know, that's okay too. Uh, and I've, I learned people really like that approach. I don't think many people like to be salesy or hard sells. And so, uh, so we have a very simple script and, and a very simple way that, that we'll, we'll target people. Um, and one of the ways is, is through an ex expired listings. And I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here, but, but we, when you have a property that is listed with a realtor, typically realtors ask for six months, uh, listing term. So um, you sign a listing agreement and they usually will have it for six months. And within the six months, if it doesn't sell, there's usually at least one, maybe two price reductions. So they'll say the market's telling us it's priced too high. So we're going to reduce it, you know, by 10,000 or by 20,000, whatever the number is, and if it doesn't sell at that time, they'll reduce it a second time. So, so at the end of six months, if it doesn't sell, now you've got a seller that's really, really motivated uh, and, or maybe the opposite, but, but the ones that are really motivated, typically there's an opportunity for us to to to, um, to wholesale that property, and again, that that means putting it under a contract to buy it, and then basically selling that contract to another person. So, um, and I hope that I hope I'm explaining it in a simple simple fashion here because it really is simple at its core. But that's probably the the most common way for for people to get started is is in wholesaling. And so, um, and again, so I would have to be attached to a company or something like of of yours to do this like if I want to get started I couldn't just go and talk to somebody and say hey right like how would I get started in something like that as a beginner 
Sure, that, that's a great question. So for, first of all, I, I would, would say, you know, it's I think it's really important to have a mentor. Um, real estate's one of those those industries where where uh, it can be uh, have some moving parts, right? And so so we always advocate, uh, you know, wherever you live, there's people there that that um, you can plug into. Uh, there's local real estate groups that you can become a part of, and all of those have folks that that are coaches or mentors that can guide you through kind of the the early days and some of the initial steps, and and hopefully guide you to not make missteps. So we always say, uh, not, whether it's us or somebody else, you know, very much encourage you to get a mentor. Uh, and there's some basic things, Whitney, that you would want to do. Uh, typically, we encourage you to start some sort of an LLC. So you have an entity that you're operating in. That's as much for credibility as it is for, you know, liability, if you will. So if you show up and you don't have a business entity, um, the person you're talking to may not take you as seriously, but but aside from a mentor and maybe having an, an entity, yeah, you can absolutely start calling people, you know, right off of Craigslist, right off of Facebook Marketplace. Um, you're driving down the street, you see a sign that's for sale by owner, you know, that, that as well. Now, if you don't know what to say, that would be the other reason for, for having, you know, some sort of a blueprint to follow. And I think it's really important. Uh, again, mentor, but most mentors or coaches are going to say, look, here's a very simple script. Here's the types of homes that you should be looking for. Here's where you find them and ultimately what you say to them. And, uh, but then the seller that you talk to gives you something back and then you don't know how to respond, right? That's where having a mentor can help you through the process. So, so I, I want to say it one more time, there is a very easy way to get started. Um, you literally can start picking up the phone. You just have to know what to say and, and ultimately who you're targeting. But, um, but when you have a, a simple blueprint to follow, um, it's not as difficult as, as maybe people would think. It's really a numbers game and it, it's, it's really understanding what to say and, and who to target. But when you have a seller that, that is, has the right motivation and, and, and motivation can come in many ways. People do crazy things when, when their backs are against the wall or when they have a certain motivation, um, someone has a job transfer or, or, you know, there's a property, they're just, you know, they had a tenant in there for a long time and they're just tired of dealing with tenants, right? They want to move on, you know, you show up and, and, and uh, it can be a very, very good fit uh, without having to say a lot. So entry level and the best starting point uh, uh, certainly would probably be wholesaling uh, and how you do it and what places you target would really be dependent on uh, the blueprint that you decide to follow. Now, you don't need any money to get started with wholesaling? No money. Now, uh, let me preface that or maybe to dovetail, uh, usually you put $10. So whenever, so let's say that you had a property that, that um, you inherited from a long uh, distance relative who you hadn't spoke to in a long time. You just wake up one day and you, you got this property and needs a bunch of work and, and uh, you know, you don't do real estate. You certainly don't rehab houses and you're just looking for someone to, to kind of um, take it off your hands. And certainly there's, there's a profit for you there. If we were to come to an agreement, you, you have to give consideration, usually in the form of $10, to, to what's called bind that agreement. So by giving you $10, we're exchanging consideration. And, and, and because of that, now we have a legally binding contract. But the beauty of wholesaling is, is you don't need money to do that other than the $10. As far as how do you market that? So let's say we, do, we come together with an agreement. Now I have the contract to buy it and I need to sell it. What most people may be surprised at is, is Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and, and Zillow. You know, those are really strong uh, hubs for us to market. And we find most of our buyers literally on free online sites. And so, um, again, part of the beauty of it is it just doesn't take a lot of money to do that. It just takes a little bit of know-how, um, but, but not a lot of cash. Now, you guys provide all this information like the blueprint and so like myself and my viewers we could go to you guys to get that information absolutely absolutely yeah okay. we have a couple of uh, different programs and 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 templates that we we provide and and many are very very inexpensive too uh, but again just a very a simple script on what to say we have a couple of different places and uh, that we will target um, but it, it's it's a lot of fun i've got to tell you you know not everybody likes to talk to people and 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 you don't always have to talk to a lot of people to, to do these deals, but um, I've got to tell you, when you're just out there and, and, and kind of shaking it up a little bit, uh, it's a lot of fun. And, and, and as we talked about really at the outset, yeah, you can make some really, really good chunk money. And, and as we say around here, how many $10,000 deals uh, does it take to, to really change, a, change your year, right? To, to have a heck of a year. If you did one of these a quarter and you're able to add another $40,000 to what you make this year, I mean, that, that's a lot 
that's more than many people make in a year. So, and that's only doing a few of these deals, you know, uh, through the course of the year. And, and, and no matter where you live, uh, what city, you know, uh, there are deals everywhere. And that's one thing I learned a long time ago. So with wholesale and use, you follow the same philosophy of trying to get at least $10,000 for each of those deals for wholesaling. We do. We do. Okay. Yep. And and now to be very fair, uh, we don't always get it. There are times where, you know, you can kind of get in and out fairly quickly and you may, may make five or six thousand dollars. And, you know, it's usually a pretty easy decision when you don't have any money tied up in the deal and, and you go to the next one. But 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 yeah, we learned that to, it's good to have at least something to shoot for on every deal. Um, m- most cases, I tell you, we make it in some cases you make a lot more than that. But but there are times that we make less than that. But um, usually, uh, again, it's it's all to the positive and it's usually a pretty easy decision. No, this is really cool. So, okay. So wholesaling is one. Is there any other different ways that I could start it? And just so you guys know, we are going to do an example of how this all works. So um, it may not be this video, but it may be another one just to fully under, so you can have a full understanding of how this works. Yeah, but so any through. other ways to uh, start investing? So, so there are. Um, and so um, we target, uh, there's one other way that we, we uh, specialize in, which doesn't require any sort of cash or credit. Um, and that really is looking for sellers who would be willing to sell it to, to you on a, a lease where they would take payments and then you have the option to buy it at, at some point, you know, down the road. And, and that is uh, really a very similar to, to wholesaling. It's kind of wholesaling, but where the seller's willing to accept payments as, the, as opposed to, to having to take a big check. So you're a seller, you have a property that's $100,000. Instead of writing a check for $100,000, you agree that as a seller, we can make payments towards that $100,000. And so we don't have any real out of pocket money today. And so there's a whole uh, blueprint behind that. But um, the other part uh, uh, that is a, another entry level part is is when people are ready to, to, to do some rehabs themselves, where they want to buy them and do the, the, the HGTV fix and flip, right? And, uh, and now the difference there is that does require you to have cash and or the ability to, um, uh, to be able to buy the property and ultimately fix it up. So that can scare people that can be a little bit of a, of a, of a bigger barrier to entry because of the fact that you do have to have cash in, in that scenario. So, so we typically will work with people um, on, on either wholesaling, just genuine wholesaling, or wholesaling where the seller would be willing to take payments. Um, neither require cash or credit, and, and both can make uh, a pretty good amount of money. And both are just simple blueprints that, that we teach. And it's all about the script. And again, very simple. We're not hard sells. And, and I, I find a lot of people really migrate to that. Nobody wants to be that hard sale. And, and I'll say one other thing that, that I always find important. Um, we believe in, in having a win-win, and, and we want the person on the other side of the, of the table to feel like they had a, a victory as well. And, and I learned that a long time ago. It doesn't have to have a winner and a loser. And I think when you when you go into these deals, um, uh, whatever variation, if you want the other side to feel like they won and you won and you both walk away happy, I find people really like to do business that way. And, and, and that makes it easier, I think, in many ways, uh, because you are looking out for the other side as much as yourself and, and ultimately good things can happen. So so those are really the ways that we teach to, to get started. Um, and as you get a few deals under your belt, that's when you may want to try a fix and flip and, and where you're coming up with some some cash to, to buy it and rehab it. And and uh, but and then you can make some serious money on those deals. Those are ones when we've got a couple right now that we have six figure profits built in. And wow. um, those aren't on every street corner, but then those those have taken cash. So what do we do say is that those big, big profits usually are going to require you to buy the property. Property, um, but we bought it from a wholesaler. So just like we're talking, um, there's there's great entry points to wholesale. Um, in the case where we have these six figure profits built in, we're the ones that are then paying cash and then taking it the long dollar. We're going to fix them up and ultimately sell them that way. So so there's a graduation process that you can get to. But um, I got to tell you, I'll say it again. I just don't know many industries where you can get started for very little and have the ability to generate ten thousand dollar plus paydays and um, we've seen it change a lot of people's lives and very proud to be a, a small part of that. Okay, Th- this was great. And I think myself and maybe all the viewers here too need to see an example to fully understand how this all works. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a part two. So we want to end this video here about just the different ways that you can invest into real estate. And then to if you guys uh, come into the next video, then we're going to talk about, we're going to actually show you an example of how this really works and how I can make money and how you guys can too. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching today. 
Have a great day. I'll see you guys to the next video.